Hi, I'm Alex Anders, and this is Bisexual Real Talk. Every so often I do a video that I'm so proud of. Are you bisexual quiz? Five stages of bisexuality. Today is one of those days because I'm going to be talking about the three levels of bisexual visibility. But before I do that, I'm going to mention that if you stick around till the end of the video, I will be airing a four minute sample of my latest audiobook, Get Him to Fall in Love with You and Stay in Love. And before you jump to any conclusions with the title, it will apply to everyone whether you're male, whether you're female, whether you're attracted to men or women, whatever else, you know, marketing. So that's why I put him in there. But it's a nonfiction book and it's a really great one. Uh, but more about that in the video. Until then, let's talk about this. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to talk about visibility because visibility, I feel, is the thing that will solve 80 or 90 percent of all bisexuals problems. Visibility. And I can't talk about it unless we have a common language on it. And when I started coming up with the video that I was going to talk about it in, I realized, oh, wait, we need some way of determining what visible, being visible means and all that stuff. So today I'm going to be giving you the three levels of bisexual visibility. And when I talk about the levels of visibility, and you know, this is a fun kind of like follow along sort of thing you can do. What I'm referring to is what you're comfortable with. So there every so often we go and we push ourselves out of our comfort zones in terms of our visibility. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the thing that you are willing to do that you're willing to commit to because it's not a big deal for you. So I'm talking about your level of comfort. Now, the three levels of bisexual visibility can be broken down into three categories. Those categories are basically how, where, and when. Um, and to kind of break it down a little more. It's basically who will understand it, who will see it, and how frequently you do it. So um, let's start with each category and go through them. The first category is how. How has three levels to it. The levels are hinting, implying, and saying. Let's go through each. So hinting. What is hinting? Well, it's best to give you an example of what hinting is. An example would be, let's say you're a female and you shave the size of your heads. Now, you might be doing that because you want to express your bisexuality, but who will understand that? People looking at that will go, okay, well, huh, she, maybe she's lesbian, or maybe she's punk, or maybe she's goth. No one, no one will be able to say definitively, why you're doing it. So it's a hint to your bisexuality, but it's not any sort of clear indication that you are bisexual because who will understand it? No one will understand it. Another example would be if you, you know, are female and you decide to wear like, you know, slightly more masculine clothing or Doc Martens or something like that, and you think this is you expressing bisexuality, well, no one's going to understand it, but that's you hinting towards it. Or if you're male and you decide to paint your nails or something like that, well, again, who's going to understand that? But you are being visible to a certain extent, so that's hinting. Next level is implying. And I think the best example of implying is actually the bisexual flag. You know, when I, I have my bisexual flag t-shirts and stuff like that, and when I first started wearing them and using them, I thought, okay, whenever I'm wearing it, it's me clearly stating that I'm bisexual. And then one day I decided that I was going to take my, my visibility to a whole other level and start wearing my bisexual clothing to my gym, my climbing gym. And I realized very quickly that no one knows what the, what the hell that is. I mean, a lot of bisexuals know what it is, but honestly, probably only like 10%, 20% of bisexuals know what the bisexual flag is. And even less than that, less than that of gay people understand what that is. And certainly way, way less than that in terms of straight people understand what the bisexual flag is. So you could wear your bi flag thinking, oh, I'm being visible, when in actuality, you're, <laughs> you're kind of still being in the closet to the vast majority of people. So that's implying. And another example of implying would be, let's say that you're a guy and you say that last year you did, you're in a group and you're talking and you say that last year you dated a woman, currently you're dating a guy. Like to you, you might be saying, 
yes, I'm being visible about being bisexual because I'm stating that I, I dated, I'm dating both men and women. But who will understand that? Certainly, if you said that to me, I would go, that person's bisexual. And if you say that to certain other bisexuals, they'll go, that person's bisexual. But let's say that you were to say that to a gay, gay guy. A gay a guy might look at that and go, before you were confused, and now you're clear. So you're actually gay. Or, you know, if you say the reverse, like last year you dated a woman and now you're dating a guy. Or last year you dated a guy and now you're dating a woman. A straight person might look at that and go, Previously, you were confused, and now you understand you're straight again. So even just stating who, like that you date multiple genders or you have dated multiple genders is not being clear about being visible. That's just implying. Like people in the know will know that you're saying you're being bisexual, but not people outside of the know. So that's implying. The third level is saying, and saying would be either verbally saying the words bi or bisexual or pansexual or something that clearly indicates that you are, you have a continuous attraction to multiple genders. Just saying those words, identifying yourself. Or another one is wearing it. Like I have my bi mo t-shirts. I have a shirt that says famously bisexual. I have a shirt that says uh, MMF, which is male, male, female. Now that's still kind of implying because it's, you know, who's in the know for that. But also I have, you know, other shirts. And I wear these shirts at the gym because I want to say clearly to everyone around me, I am bisexual. So you could either just say the words bisexual or bi or pan or whatever else, or you can wear it so that everyone can see you and they can clearly see that you're representing bisexuality. So those are the three levels of how um, you can be bisexual. So that's category one. Category two is where. Where is who will see it? And there are three levels to that. There's safe spaces, protected spaces, and out in the wild. First one, safe spaces. What's that? Well, that's a space where you know for sure that everyone around you is accepting of your bisexuality. It's completely safe. So it could be a bisexual event um, that only has bisexuals in it. Um, it could be your friends that you've already come out to and you know that this is a safe space, you're being visible in front of them. Or it could be like a family member or something like that. Whatever it is, it is a space that is clearly safe. I'm not talking about a gay safe space. I'm talking about a bisexual safe space. So yes, that's level one. Level two is protected space. Now, protected space is a space that is run by another organization, but that organization is committed to protecting or keeping bisexuals safe. So it could be a school. It could be a college. For me, it's the climbing gym because the climbing gym that I go to has a very clear policy that they support the gay and trans people. Um, and I know that if I ever have any sort of incident there, I could go to the management, tell them about it, and that person will be kicked out and stuff like that. It's a protected space. So um, you might think a LGBT center is a protected space, and it could be, but it could also not be. Um, just depending on where you are and the attitudes of the people running it, a pride festival is a protected space because you know that if you go to pride festival, um, even if it's like an outdoor sort of thing and you know, it's, it's all these places, you know that if anything happens, there's, there's police there and you can go to the police and you can tell them about the harassment and that person will be taken care of. So protected space is just a place run by an organization where you know that the organization has your back if something happens. That's level two. Level three is out in the wild. So out in the wild is, a, is walking the streets. It's going somewhere where there are no cops, like where you, where you could be subject to harassment. You could be subject to anything. Like you just don't know. And it doesn't matter if you live in a safer city or not. Like it's still, if you're out in, uh, let's say, let's even go as far as to say like Los Angeles. It's not, it's not protected because anything could happen. You could be in West Hollywood, which is like Boys Town in, in Los Angeles, and something could happen. It's still out in the wild. So that's the third level out in the wild. It's a place where there's no organizations to protect you. Anything could happen, and you just don't know. 
So that's the second category of where. The third category is when, which is how frequently you do it. And that is rarely, regularly, and five days a week or more. So rarely would be something like um, maybe once a year. So let's say that once a year you go to a Pride Festival. That's rarely. Or let's say that you know just every so often, maybe every three months or something, um, not on a regular basis, but every three months you'll you feel comfortable with wearing a shirt somewhere, whether it's to school or whether it's, you know, wherever it is, that's rarely. Regularly is, you know, on a constant basis. So you know that once a week or once a month, you are going to be visible and you're comfortable with that. It's, again, it's, there's a difference between max and comfort. I'm talking about comfort. So rarely would be something you do on, that you know is coming up because it's regular and this is when, you be, when you're visible. So that's regularly. And then of course, the last one is five days a week. And I say five days a week simply because that's the work week, but basically at any point, like you could do it five days a week, you do it seven days a week, you could do it three days a week and you don't, you don't think, oh, I can't get myself to do it more than three days. It's just like you could do it five days a week, you could do as much as you want. That's just that level, five days a week I'm calling it. So those are the three categories of the levels of bisexual visibility, and those are the three levels in each. Now, why is this helpful? Well, this is very helpful because now we can communicate with each other. Like we have criteria, we have ways that we could maybe, like if we want to be more visible, we have ways that we can apply it, and we could have a way of communicating with each other. For example, I am a three, two, three. What does that mean? Well, that means I'm a three in the how category, I'm saying. I am a two in the where category, which is protected spaces. And I'm uh, in the when category, I'm five days a week. And this is how it kind of comes across. The reason why I'm that is because I wear my bisexual t-shirts at the climbing gym every time I go. That's what that means. So I'm a three, two, three. Now, I didn't always used to be a three, two, three. In fact, just recently, I decided that I was going to be um, be more visible as a bisexual because I figured if I'm if I want to date a bisexual I need to go to a place where bisexuals are where they frequent let everyone else know that I'm a bisexual and have the bisexuals be drawn to me be the beacon that draws bisexuals to me has it worked yes it has but before I did that um, I was a three two two and how was I a three two two beforehand because I would say I'm bisexual in a protected space, the protected space being YouTube, I would make YouTube videos and I know that anything happened, YouTube, like they would ban someone or block their account if they were to harass me. So it's a protected space, whether it's making the videos or the, or the comment section, it was a protected space and I would do it on a regular basis, which is two. So I was a three, two, two previously. And then I decided to max, like go beyond my comfort level by wearing my shirts at the gym. And even though that you know I was doing it, I was still a three two two, and then I just became so comfortable with it that I went from like my max at that time was three two three because you know I was doing it like I was actually it was three two one because I would do it rarely. Um, that was my max level, but because I did it, I pushed myself past my max level, or I was past my comfort zone in so many times. I went up a level, which is now three, two, three. So that's how it applies. So if you want to talk with someone else about, you know, your levels, if you want to have a conversation in the comments section where you share what your levels are, you could just use the numbers, you know, you could use the numbers from one, the first column, the second column, the third column. If you are in the closet, then obviously you're a zero. But if you're visible in any way, then you can apply those numbers and everyone will automatically know. And please, if you will, Share what your number is. This is a great kind of exercise to kind of think who, who you are, who you want to become, and what's possible for you. And next week, I'm going to tell my story about like how I have been pushing myself to be more visible and the, the effects of being visible and all that stuff. Just a short kind of sample is when I decide I was going to be more visible and I wear my t-shirts, I have a shirt that says famously bisexual on it. And I thought, okay, well, how can I kind of like push my limits a little bit in terms of my comfortable my comfortability with being visible? Some a friend invited me to a vegan festival, 
And I thought, well, of vegans, those vegans will absolutely accept me um, as, you know, wearing my bicycle shirt. Uh, hint to next week, they did. Um, and it was a really great experience. But, and I'll tell you more about that next week. But afterwards, my friend says, well, do you want to go do something else? And I said, sure, forgetting what I was wearing. And then we decided to go to the mall, this huge mall with a whole bunch of families in it. And I agreed to it. And as I was driving there, I went, oh, crap, I'm wearing my, my bisexual, famously bisexual shirt. So and that was the point of me pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And because I did that, now I am you know, more likely to go up in my level. And the next thing I'm trying to get to is I want to get to a 3-3, three, 3-3-1, three, 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 actually. I want to be able to like wear a bisexual t-shirt out in the wild at least on a rare, a rare occasion. Like, I want to be comfortable with that. I can do that now in terms of pushing myself out of my comfort zone, but I want to become comfortable every so often throwing on my a buy t-shirt and going to the grocery store or the mall or hanging out with friends and be comfortable with it. Because that's key. Not what your max level is, but what you're comfortable with. So again, What's your bisexual visibility number? I would really love to know what it is. I'd love to have a conversation about this. And, and next week, I'll be talking about, you know, what level you should be given your circumstances and all that stuff and what you should be pushing for. But that's all next week. This week, um, if you would like to support the channel because uh, you like what I'm doing on the channel, then there are a lot of ways you can do it. You can support me on Patreon. Uh, there are multiple tiers in which you can support with, one of which will allow us to have one-on-one -on -one conversations where you can talk about your bisexuality, about the challenges you're going through, um, about relationships you're in, stuff like that. That's one of the tiers, but you can do that by clicking on the link in the description to my Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, you can also purchase your bisexual visibility clothing or stuff using, if you're watching this YouTube uh, video on YouTube, You'll notice there's a merch shelf that has been put on my channel, which has many of my products in it, depending on when you're watching it. Uh, there's certainly their t-shirts for sure, but also I'm gonna be adding to it, and this you can get to already in a link in the description. I have added bisexual themed socks. Bam! So there are dress socks and the bisexual bi plaid and bi hearts uh, designs. The same are true for crew socks. Crew socks are like those athletic socks. You can get in those designs. And I even have leggings. And I will be adding more over time, but I'm so excited about these bisexual socks because I think that really socks are in right now and socks are one of the perfect ways if you want to ease into bisexual visibility. That's one of the perfect ways to do it because basically you only see it when you sit down or when you lift up your pant legs and show it to people. And the leggings are something you can wear underneath your clothing. So I think those are perfect ways. If you want to support the channel, you can support the channel by clicking on the link to Teespring to check them out from the merch shelf and also from the, the link in the description. And finally, if you'd like to support the channel, you could get one of my audiobooks. I am releasing more and more bisexual romance audiobooks, but today, if you stick around after the video, you'll be listening to Get Him to Fall in Love with You and Stay in Love, which is when I talk, I talk about relationships and love and how to fall in love and stuff like that. It's a new edition of How to Win the Love Game. Uh, with better marketing. Uh, so if you want to stick around, that uh, sample of that audiobook will be um, coming up next, and the links are in the description below. Until next week, stay cooler, my bisexual friends. Stay cooler. Bye. And stick around for the sample. And now, a sample from my audiobook, Get Him to Fall in Love with You and Stay in Love. The power of this book is that it puts your destiny in your own hands. You can use the knowledge gained within to understand why you might not have fallen in love with the guy who seemed perfect for you, or you can use it to understand why the person you've fallen for hasn't fallen in love with you. Past that, you will be able to use the information gained within to increase your likelihood of finding love. You'll be able to set up the best conditions for someone to fall in love with you, and you'll be able to move closer to a state of peace about not being in a relationship, although the world keeps telling you that you need to be in one. 
Choosing to not play is another way of winning the love game. Because as you will learn, love is simply a series of chemical releases. Those releases aren't limited to romantic or sexual interactions. And knowing that is step one to getting the guy of your dreams to fall in love with you and stay in love with you. Chapter 1. Introduction My biggest pet peeve whenever someone is describing how to play a new game is when they don't start off by stating the game's premise. For that reason, I won't assume that you have the same definitions of love that I do. So, in the following chapter, I will do what poets and philosophers have tried to do for thousands of years. I will define what love is, or at least what it will be for the context of this book. Chapter 2. What is love? When people hear the word love, they think of a number of different things. They might think of the feeling they have for a family member. They could think of the feeling they get when watching their favorite sports team. Or they could think of the feeling they have for their romantic partner. All of those things are love, and they share the same mechanisms that define romantic love. But for the purpose of this book, we will define love as romantic love, and the feelings which define romantic love will be that overwhelming desire to be with a person we are romantically interested in while simultaneously feeling that heartache which comes from being apart from them. For the purposes of this book, that will be what love is. As I've stated, all of the other forms of love include one of these two compulsive feelings, the love we have for a parent or a child usually involves that heartache we feel when we are away from them. The love we have for a sports team involves the compulsion to be around the thing that brings you pleasure. What I am describing as romantic love is more intense than either of these two experiences, however. That doesn't make any other form of love less valid or less important. It just makes it different. And if your current relationship doesn't include those two compulsive feelings, it doesn't mean that there is anything wrong with your relationship. It just makes it outside of this book's definition of love. Also, keep in mind that nowhere in my definition have I mentioned sex or sexual desire. A desire for sex does not define romantic love. Sure, you might want your relationship to include sex, but this isn't a book about how to win the relationship game or the sex game. This book is strictly about how to win the love game, and you don't have to want to have sex with someone to become overwhelmed by your desire to be with them while feeling heartache when they are not around. Chapter 3. Love Chemicals You've been listening to a sample from Get Him to Fall in Love with You and Stay in Love. The full audiobook can be gotten on iTunes, Amazon, and Audible, and the links are in the description for the podcast. Enjoy.